Welcome to The Sarah Scoop Show. It's time to get the scoop with Sarah. Hi, my name is Matthew Solomon. Uh, I am an actor and I am currently in the feature film uh, premiering in drive-in theaters right now called Followed, and I play the lead role in the movie. So the movie follows my character, Mike, who is a video blogger who goes to haunting sightings in Los Angeles. The entire film is done found footage style. So you're essentially just watching my character's video blogs that he would have posted on the internet. And the story of the movie is we follow him to this haunted hotel where sort of everything goes wrong. I shot this movie actually a few years ago. Uh, it's kind of like, I keep calling it the little movie that could because it's an indie film. It didn't have a huge budget and they still just keep like, uh, overcoming all these incredible hurdles and now it's out in theaters which is amazing um, and it's exciting after a few years now to finally see it out there in the world. It's been a super long time coming. I, I couldn't even tell you at this point how many years but I, I you know I shot this movie before I ever had an agent before I had any TV jobs so I've just been kind of sitting on my sitting on my hands hoping that it would that it would uh, be released to the world. <laughs> Not, definitely not how it usually goes. Although movies, you know, it's, it's not unusual for a movie to be made and then take a really long time to come out. There are movies with like super A-list celebrities that were shot, edited, everything was finished and, they, and they've just never seen the light of day. It's a, it's a very, very, it's so different than TV. TV just kind of, you shoot it and you know it's gonna happen because it's been scheduled. With film, you never know if the work that you're putting into it is actually gonna be seen by people. So I feel incredibly lucky that people are actually seeing this. So uh, I play the character Mike. He is a young video blogger uh, engaged to his fiance Jess, who's a nurse. The sort of main word to describe Mike is irreverent. Um, he, you know, there, there are some rude words that you could use to describe him. <laughs> and he really loves to go to all of these like different locations where these sort of tragic stories happen and make fun of them. He loves to make fun of other people's um, superstition. Uh, which was really fun for me because I'm a pretty superstitious person myself. So I got to kind of make fun of myself playing the role a little bit. And, you know, you really go from sort of finding this video blogger who's very full of himself, a little irritating to seeing what actually makes him tick. Really what, what's, he, he's really just a big softy. You realize midway by, towards the end of the movie. And he, you know, I, I think that his sort of character arc ends up being actually a little bit heartbreaking by the end of it, which I think people will enjoy. It's so funny because with Mike, I talk like him a lot. I mean, of course I talk like him, it's me playing him. <laughs> but even in terms of just like the dialogue, like senses of humor, sort of like, uh, uh, sort of joking attitude, definitely very similar. But he is, I, I tell people that like the main lesson that I took away from playing Mike is like you should really listen to your friends and you should really listen to the people that you love and, uh, and like sort of heed their warnings. And uh, that's definitely something that I have always done in my life. Um, so yeah, I think ultimately he and I are very different people. I think that I also just generally respect the world more than he does. <laughs> Which was actually really fun because sort of all of the, uh, snarky thoughts that I have that I normally am suppressing a little bit. Uh, I really got to lean into that side of myself and like have an attitude and have a lot of fun and, and be kind of a jerk. And that you don't get to do that in your real life. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Uh, it, was, it was very freeing for me, for sure. The audition for this movie was super unique. There was no script yet. So I received a page long breakdown about the plot and about my character. In the movie, his, his screen handle is drop the mic. That's his uh, uh, video page. Uh, at that time, I think he was called like impudent Mike or something like that, um, which sounds a little bit like impotent. So they ended up changing the name. So I was given this page long breakdown about the movie and my character. And I went in and it was entirely improvised because uh, there was no script yet. And they just gave me two different scenarios. They asked me to play through and improvise. They ended up liking the performance and calling me back. And my callback was actually um, auditioning with people who were auditioning for the other roles. So I just stayed in the room for like seven different actors and just played with each of these new actors. Everything was still completely improvised, 
which ended up, you know, a lot of the movie is improvised. I would say, I think they said something like 85% of the actual script made it to the screen. A lot of what happens is improv. So for me, I love improvising, especially with a, a, a scenario or a breakdown, um, which I, you know, some people would call that mumble core, I suppose. So that was a very, it's probably, I'll probably never audition for another project the same way, um, which is kind of a bummer because I really loved doing it. Yeah, it was super unconventional. So I self-submitted for this project. So for my first theatrical release to come from a project that I submitted myself for, uh, I mean, I've literally never heard of that before. I, I, I would be curious to meet somebody else who's had this experience. And for it to do well too, you know, we got number one new movie in the box office, which is amazing. So yeah, it's been an unconventional project pretty much the entire time. <laughs> Yeah, it feels super special. I um, got really close with everybody summer camp. Every time we see each other, it's so fun. And we're, we have this very specific, unique relationship with each other. It's really nice. I mean, Sam Valentine is <laughs> probably one of my favorite people that I've ever worked with. We, I, I don't even know how to describe it. We just had so much fun. And when we were like, have, were really tired, we would kind of come to each other and we would complain. <laughs> and the other person would just say like, pull it together, stop complaining, you're lucky to be here. Um, she, and you know, she's had a little bit more experience than me. So having her sort of talk me through things, uh, give me some advice was invaluable. And she's definitely been my closest friend from this specific project since. Um, she's also just like crazy talented. You know, there's a scene in the movie where she's crying. And before they would call action, she'd be turning to me and like joking and like goofing off and whatever. And then they would call action and then boom, tears. And it was just really, she, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's an extremely amazing talent that she has. And I, I would love to work with her again. I hope we get the opportunity to. Oh, for sure. So the thing about, the thing about horror is that when you're shooting it, it's really quite funny. Um, it, it doesn't, it's not scary in real life. <laughs> um, and so like, for instance, okay, there's this one scene, this is one of the few scenes that I wasn't in, so I actually got to hang out and watch it happen. Um, Sam Valentine and uh, the guy who plays Christopher, Tim Dreyer, uh, were doing a chase scene. And I'm sitting, sort of looking down this perpendicular hallway, and <laughs> I hear them screaming, and then I see Christopher go by, and then I see Sam Valentine go by, and then I see the cameraman running behind them with his camera on his shoulder, and then the sound team runs by and they're bouncing along. And then there's like a five second pause. And then the director of the movie and the producer with a monitor in front of their faces goes sprinting by as well. And it was like a, something out of the Three Stooges. It was just like, it was just so funny looking and bizarre. <laughs> and so it, it's just fun to like be in this well lit, beautiful hotel and then to have people screaming as if a murderer is chasing after them. <laughs> it's very bizarre. It, most of the sort of scary moments in this project were like that, except for well, barring the, the um, basement scene at the end of the movie. That was genuinely very frightening. <laughs> that was a very scary, we didn't do anything to the basement in the movie. And it was, I, I was quite freaked out the entire time. I was just gonna say, it's interesting when the, the sort of surroundings you have give you everything that you need to really perform in a scene, like especially with that basement scene at the end. There was not a lot that I had to put into it emotionally because I was really freaked out. I was also exhausted because it was the uh, last thing we were shooting after two weeks. Um, so I just kind of got to do it. I didn't have to overthink it at all. I get scared very easily. So I don't watch a ton of horror movies. I'm the person sitting on the couch or sitting in the theater with my hands in front of my eyes, or I'm plugging my ears. If it sounds scary, I'll plug my ears. If it looks scary, I'll cover my eyes. So, you know, I'd seen like the Scream franchise at that point before the shooting the movie. And one of my favorite movies at the time was Rosemary's Baby, but that's much more of like a psychological thriller than it is a horror movie. So, shooting this movie, I was like, I don't know a whole lot about the genre, but I've heard shooting horror movies, is, it's no, they're notoriously fun to shoot, so I will gladly jump at the opportunity. And since shooting the movie, understanding kind of what goes into them, understanding sort of, there's a whole culture surrounding horror movies and all of these 
different tropes that people love to sort of build up and, and break down in different movies and stuff like that. So since shooting this movie, I've become a little bit of a horror fanatic, actually, and I've seen quite a few of them at this point. Um, they're just so fun. And there's something very uh, thrilling and cathartic about watching other people fight for their lives on television. Um, so yeah, I, I've become a big horror fan for sure. So I've wanted to be an actor since I was probably five years old. You know, I'm that kid that was in his school play and then was like, oh, this is good. I want to do this more. And I come from a very creative family. My mom uh, has been a writer and writes poetry my entire life. Uh, my sister was always doing dance and ballet. My brother is an architect now. My dad is in business, but he's sort of the kind of entrepreneurial businessman who just uh, goes out and pitches new ideas to people. So everybody in my family is very creative. Uh, uh, my sort of creative outlet just happens to be theater. And I grew up my entire life thinking that I would be an actor. And then once it sort of came to high school and I was starting to think about where I would go to college, the realism set in a little bit. And I was like, I can't do that. Acting doesn't make sense. That's not like a viable career path. Um, so I was like, I'll do, I don't know, advertising, something creative, who knows. <laughs> and then I went to um, a theater summer program at Boston University. And we were at the end of a class and we were all sitting down and I had this um, theater professor basically say, you know, it's possible to be an actor and have a career. You know, you, you don't have to be, um, I, the example I think he used was Jennifer Aniston. He was like, you don't necessarily have to be Jennifer Aniston to be a working actor. And he was like, there's so many different avenues you can take to be a successful actor. And I heard him say that and I was like, oh, so I, I can do it that's okay, then I, then I have to. There's literally no other option. And so I studied theater for co at college and have been acting ever since. And now here I am, you know, with my first movie coming out in theaters and, you know, I, I would love to go back and thank him because he sort of set me off on this path. was so fun to shoot. I was on set for a couple days and I worked with The Rock. I worked with Rob Corddry, both just the nicest guys ever. What, was, what I was really surprised about with that shoot was how improvised it actually ended up being. Uh, for a scripted TV series on HBO, I was like, oh, it's, you know, they're going to be word perfect. Everything's going to kind of be nailed down, but it was very fluid and they kind of got to do what they wanted. So that was really cool to watch. I actually ended up improvising a little bit too at one point and they put it in the episode, which is super cool. So yeah, that was also one of my very first huge production, like a giant budget, had a trailer jobs and it was so fun. And it was nice to see that on a project of that caliber with that much money, everybody was really kind and sort of happy to be there and fun to work with. Um, Rob Corddry and I ended up talking about theater for a really long time because most of my background is in theater. And then, you know, I had like a five hour shoot one of the days standing next to Dwayne Johnson and he was very nice as well. And yeah, it was a cool experience. Thank you for watching The Sarah Scoop Show. Head to sarahscoop.com for more.